this video, I would like to continue to talk about second language acquisition and its processes. So in the previous video, we talked a lot about why it is so difficult to pick up second language. One main source of difficulty lies in L1 influence, especially when you have started learning second language after puberty, because by puberty, your L1 system becomes more stable, generalizable, and robust, meaning your L1 becomes more adult-like. Especially after puberty, if you learn any additional languages, they are inevitably affected by your fully developed L1 systems. But in this video though, we'd like to talk about the factors even beyond L1 influence for successful second language acquisition. Even within the same L1, L2 pairing, there's a huge amount of ability. So I'd like to introduce this very unique, exciting project that I did together with my friend and colleague, uh, Francois Brajot, when both of us were PhD students. In this, in this project, we recruited 42 Japanese learners of English in Vancouver and Montreal, Canada. And these participants were carefully selected based on the fact that they had arrived in Canada after the age of 18, meaning they were all late bilinguals speaking English with a, some form of Japanese accent. And this is another crucial information about these participants that I'd like you to remember. Their length of residence in Canada was widely different, ranging from less than one month all the way to more than 10 years. Because we are really interested in the way how they would pronounce English R in a spontaneous way, we use this picture description task. Basically, they were asked to describe seven different pictures in a row, and each picture description, they had only 10 seconds to go. First three pictures were just used as a practice so that they could become familiar with the task format, and the remaining four pictures were used this, for them. So, for example, in this picture, they had to describe what is actually happening by using the three keywords and obviously what, what we were really interested in was the way how they would pronounce English R in the target word read and afterwards we cut and edited all these spontaneous English R pronunciation among these Japanese participants and we played these samples in a randomized order to native listeners of English so basically Canadians all they were asked to do was to make a very quick judgment about how good their English R pronunciation was but on a nine point scale so one a native like R two good R, three probably R, four possibly R, and five is like somewhere in between, and six possibly L, seven probably L, eight good L, finally native like L. This nine native like L could, could have been very problematic. All the participants intended to pronounce English R, but then it was sounded perfect L, which could have hindered intelligibility to a significant exciting degree. moment. I'm going to share and play these speed samples with you. So you will immediately hear so much difference among these participants, although all of them were Japanese speakers of English, meaning the degree of L1 influence must have been equal across the participants. So what I'd like you to do is to listen to these speech samples and think about why is it that these participants show a huge amount of individual Again, I carefully cut and edited their English R pronunciation in room, race, read, writes. Blue, lace, read, light. So participant one, she was judged to be probably L, so 7.7 .7 out of 9. How about participant two? Blue, lace, read, light. His pronunciation was judged to be L, so probably L. How about participant 3? Blue, lace, date, right. In this case, somewhere in between, neutral, so 5.2. How about participant 4? Room, lace, read, right. Pronunciation was judged to be probably R, so 3.2. Room, lace, read, right. Participant 5 was just to be 2.8, so probably R. How about participant 6? Room, race, read, write. She was judged to be a 2.1, so good R. Finally, sample 7. Room, race, read, write. 1.6, so again, good R. So even she showed some kind of Japanese accent while she was pronouncing English R. I would like you to think about why is it that th there was difference among the participants' English R pronunciation. In other words, why is it that participants 1, 2, 3 pronounce English R much less native-like, target-like manner than participants 5, 6, 7 did? So what kinds of factors may have affected the outcomes of their English R pronunciation in the end? 
So in the next video, I will actually talk about a set of factors that second language acquisition researchers have been particularly interested in. Obviously, there must have been a bunch of factors, but I would like to provide a very much selective review on these issues. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.